Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. I am joined today by three guests, which is a little bit unusual, and we are certainly appreciative of their time, as always. We're going to be talking today about a group in town um, doing an awful lot of work um, behind the scenes, uh, and we're going to be talking about a program that they are uh, involved with, which is right out, uh, out front and center, and we want to bring more understanding, but also uh, just get the word out that this is going on because uh, we're sure that folks in Arlington are interested. So, specifically, I have I, right next to me, excuse me, Emily Dirtz and then Jennifer Campbell. They are both committee members for the Zero Waste Arlington, uh, on the Zero Waste Arlington Committee. And at the end of the table, Peter McCarthy is the owner of Za Restaurant. Why is that important? Or co-owner, let me say. Excuse me to Peter's wife. <laughs> co-owner. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you may be wondering why, you're going to find out, okay? So first of all, I would like to start, we're going to talk about No Plastics, Please. That is the, uh, the program that Peter is involved with and that you guys have initiated. But I'd like to start actually by giving people a primer, more or less, uh, on Zero Waste Arlington. It's composition, it's history. Uh, you know, what it is that you guys have been up to already, that kind of thing. So, how about, Jennifer, can you do that for us? Sure. Um, so, Zero Waste Arlington is a town committee. We work to reduce all forms of waste through education and advocacy to residents, to businesses, and to town officials. So, we're a volunteer committee. We're composed of about 10 core committee members, and then we work with lots of other community partners, and we actually work very closely with the town's recycling coordinator to educate people about how they can consume less and dispose of household waste responsibly. Uh, we have a website, zerowastearlington.org, so we hope people will go there. They can find out more about us, sign up for our emails and our monthly newsletter, and we also have a Facebook page where people can learn more. And is 10 for, you know, I was wondering about the composition of the committee, is 10 like what you aim for uh, or just what happens to be the number at the moment? Um, how is it that, that that, you know, is the case? It's been 10 as long as I've been involved, which has been since 2020. Emily, do you know if that's the official number? Yeah, I think we have 10 seats on the committee. So we have the 10 of us that are committee members, and then we have quite a few people who kind of come in ad hoc, you know, depending on what we're working on and their interest level in that topic, so. And I think that Zero Waste Arlington is the latest or a newer iteration of a group that already existed in, in before that? Do you, do you know yeah, about it, the history there? Yes, it used to be called the Recycling Committee, and that's actually very telling, the fact that the group has changed its name from the Recycling Committee to Zero Waste Arlington, mm -hmm. because Zero Waste is really a more holistic and comprehensive sort of view. So recycling is important, but it's a post-consumer behavior. That's what happens when something is at the end of its life and you're getting ready to dispose of it, whereas Zero Waste is all about pre-consumer choices to try to cut down on the number of things you have to dispose of in the first place. So we like to talk about the five R's, which are refuse, reduce, reuse, rot, and recycle. <laughs> so refuse and reduce are about saying no to excess packaging. For example, maybe you don't need the straw, or you don't need the plastic utensils, something we'll talk more about later, or maybe you don't need the plastic bag at the convenience store. Reuse is about switching to permanent, reusable alternatives. So a very common one that lots of people have these days is a refillable water bottle so that you don't need to buy plastic bottles of water or a travel mug for coffee, for example. Um, rot is composting to reduce food waste. Mm -hmm. And then recycling is the fifth step. And it is important, but again, it comes at the end of all of those behaviors to try to cut down on our consumption to begin with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I, I don't think it's a surprise to people or to too many that I am married to the recycling coordinator <laughs> you're referring to. And it is funny for me to, to have been with her over these years and find out how often she says to me and to others that something uh, might as well just go in the trash mm -hmm. because recycling is not the answer to mm -hmm. everything as it turns out. Yeah. Um, and so I'm so glad that you've kind of elaborated on, on the five R's as you've put it. And that really that, that covers the entire cycle Mm -hmm. from, as you said, the, the, the conception and how are you going to make this product and deliver it and consume it, et cetera, all the way through to how are you going to responsibly dispose of it. 
Yeah, it's really important. And um, the plastic pollution crisis is in part because plastics are very difficult to recycle and only a small percentage of them get recycled in any case. So for example, with plastic water bottles, only about 20% of them get recycled. Um, the rest of them end up in landfills or they end up as litter in our streets and our roadways and in our waterways. So that's part of the reason that in 2022, the town passed a ban on single-use plastic water bottles. So it really reflects the fact that our town is very concerned about the plastic mm -hmm. pollution crisis, and there's actually been a series of efforts to reduce it. So in 2018, the town passed a ban on single-use uh, plastic bags, mm -hmm. and that was followed in 2019 by a ban on polystyrene and styrofoam. And then in 2022, the ban on the single-use plastic water bottles. So it's great that our town has made these efforts. It just speaks to the fact that we really care about these issues. And it's increasingly important. Uh, and today we're going to talk about restaurant practices, which is super critical because 60% of Americans get takeout or delivery once a week. It's really a way of life for a lot of us. Um, and a statistic that I found especially shocking is that Americans are using 36 billion plastic utensils a year and 142 billion straws. And if you think about it, all that is plastic that is used one time and then it's thrown away. And all of that discarded plastic has a huge impact on our environment. It breaks down into microplastics that last forever. It contaminates our oceans. It destroys habitats. It harms wildlife. Um, so any effort that we can take to address this single-use plastic pollution crisis is really critical. And like you said, there are there is the town approach, uh, which has seen via referendum and other kinds of policy decisions, bans being imposed, and, and we're all in favor of that, obviously. But there's also what you guys are doing in this particular case, which is getting folks uh, just kind of lined up around a, a, a policy shift or a shift in the way, in, in, in the practice practices. Uh, so just, just explain to us, please, Emily, uh, what No Plastics Please yeah, is yeah. all about. I, I mean, exactly, James, as, as you've said, you know, this, this idea, as, as Jennifer described, I mean, I think a lot of us are frustrated uh, about how much plastic just kind of comes into our, our lives. And Zero Waste Arlington wanted to figure out a way to help empower people to push up, push against it. But you know, there's so much plastic, it's, it's really hard to come up with a comprehensive single campaign that's going to deal with all plastic waste. So we decided to focus in on the unnecessary and unwanted plastic items that you might get during your restaurant dining experience. And the goal here is, as you said, James, it's really to kind of shift the default from offering your customer every single possible item that they might need for their dining um, experience to just simply inserting the question, do you need this before I give it to you? So before I give you a straw, before I give you this condiment packet, do, do you really need this to enjoy your meal? So, you know, you mentioned bans and regulations. I just, just to be clear, this is not intended to be a ban. This is not intended in any way, shape or form to control how a restaurant works, you know, interacts with their customer. It's not intended to diminish the enjoyment of the meal. It really is just that inserting that simple question, do you need this item before I give it to you? Um, and if the answer is yes, then the person is welcome to have it. The restaurant is welcome to give it to them. Uh, but if the person doesn't need it, then it's not given and it doesn't become waste in the first place. So kind of going back to Jennifer's, the R's, you know, the refuse and the reduce. So specifically, what we're asking restaurants to do is kind of twofold. So for the, the dining in experience, um, a no plastic please restaurant would serve on reusable plates, reusable, give you reusable utensils and reusable drinkware, and then only provide things like straws and um, condiment packets and extras if the customer asks for them. Um, and then turning to takeout and delivery, if uh, for a no plastic please restaurant, the, the, the requirement is just to only provide these single use items like straws, utensils, and napkins, again, if the customer requests them. So we're not intending to prevent people from enjoying their meals or prevent businesses, restaurants from adequately serving their, their customers. It's really just to ask that question. Do you really need this thing I'm giving you before it's given and then immediately turned into waste? Um, 
Yeah, so I do, right from when I first heard about this, I have to say, I just appreciate it so much the simple genius of the <laughs> idea. Because it's just like the opt-in, opt-out choice, right? Mm -hmm. You just change it from being something that, and anyway, in this case, as you say, it's very, very simple, right? All you're doing, you're, you're not changing any basic practice or anything that, you're not taking anything away mm -hmm. that somebody might want. You're just doing your best to make sure that people are mindful of the fact that they may not need it. Mm -hmm. And when asked, maybe their decision is gonna be, actually, no, I guess I mm -hmm. don't, mm -hmm. right? It's, and that's probably who you really, the, the best um, target audience, in a sense, for this, is not those folks who are gonna say, of course I want, you, you know, damn it, you better give it to me, <laughs> right? That's a certain thing that's mm -hmm. gonna take a while. But I think there's probably a large mass of people who, well, they accept it and they throw it, you know, they mm -hmm. get home, they go, oh, shoot, I forgot to, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they throw it out. And this is, again, just going to allow them to mm -hmm. be more mindful of that decision, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Um, so, obviously, you need partner we restaurants do. in order to do so. Um, and I understand that six have signed up That's so right. far in town. Um, yes. Go. Uh, yeah, I'm ha so we have Roasted Granola, Sashwan Dumpling, and the Heights Pub. We also have in Arlington Center, um, Punjab, Noodle Market, and Sa. Yes, and so Peter, welcome to the conversation. <laughs> thank you for your, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Yeah, great. Um, but uh, yeah, we really want, I, I'm very interested in, in, in finding out what your experience has been so far. Um, what was your initial reaction upon being approached? Um, what are the ups and downs or the pros and cons of this oh, for you? For us, it, really easy. We were already doing it. Mm -hmm. It's the, these are practices that we felt uh, that we should be doing. It, it's it, we've always tried to 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 be conscious of the environment and and of uh, what we do as a restaurant does to the community. And uh, I remember, you know, 25 years ago we opened our first restaurant. Everything went into one dumpster, mm. just right in the dumpster. And then it was out of recycle bin, and then it was out of compost bin, and now it's the dumpster is huge, but that's the recycle. And then the other, the compost is small and the, the uh, trash is even smaller. It's, it's really changed. But as far as no plastics, please, uh, quite a while ago we decided straws only on, upon request. Uh, we, the takeout plastics, one-time use plastics, only if someone asks for them. And that's, you know, it it's just makes sense. Mm -hmm. So. So, um, I mean, so I guess you were an easy one, right? Uh, yeah. as, as far as it goes. But does that mean that there's no, there's no changes that you've had to make? There's no sacrifices of any sort, uh, either logistical years, we've, we've or made, financial or we've anything? We've made changes. Uh, you know, it's it, a long time coming. And it, it's, it's, I think it's just how we've always operated is, is trying to do the best that we can to be part of the, the community and, uh, you know, buying local f food uh, and, I don't having having good practices. You know, we have kids. We want things to be right mm -hmm. for our kids as they get older, and set a good example. And uh, a lot of these things do cost more, but if you use it a lot less of them, they don't cost as much. Mm -hmm. So, so it, overall, I mean, there's not been a financial impact it, on you I'd, of any. It's, it's up and down. It, you know, it's certainly the the uh, compostables cost more than plastics, but at the same time. It's, you know, it's an easy choice, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and as you were mentioning before we went on air, you guys live in Arlington as yes. well. So this is, you're, you're kind of part of this community-focused effort, and yep. I imagine that that brings you a certain amount of satisfaction in and of it itself. It does. I, I believe that the people in Arlington feel the same way as we do, and we try to uh, be part of that, just mm -hmm. put it back, you know. And reflect that. And yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but I imagine that then, as, as I said earlier, Emily, uh, Peter was an easy one. Yes. Right? That, 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 that makes sense. However, you've gotten six. I can't imagine you've only approached six restaurants. Correct, so yeah. what have you heard from the folks who aren't signed on to this right now? Yeah. What, 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 what are their concerns? So I, I would say uh, by far and large, everybody appreciates that this is something that people in Arlington care about. And I, I think it is just, uh, you know, they're trying to, you know, um, respond to what their customers need. 
you know, we spoke to some restaurants that do a lot of lunchtime delivery um, or lunchtime takeout. And there, the expectation for the customer is, well, I'm going to eat this in my car. And so I might need all of these different single use items. And it becomes cumbersome for, you know, the restaurant to ask every single time because predominantly maybe that, that customer base might want it. So for them, restaurants that, that, that have that type of a business, it's, it's, it is a lot to ask them to shift and risk alienating their customers. Mm -hmm. So, But they were certainly mindful of it and, and, and interested in talking more about a way to you know, figure out, is there a way to implement this? Um, so I think I think that's most people were receptive. Most n nobody uh, suggested that they didn't think it was an issue that they didn't hear from their customers. It's just a way. It, I think the challenge is implementing it in a way that you know the customers remain satisfied because certainly after the pandemic, I mean that hit restaurants so hard. You know they're just coming back, right. and we and we and 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 that's why we're also kind of slowly expanding the program. You know, just slowly rolling it out and talking to. Restaurants, you know, um, not a, not in, a, a, in an intense base. Trying to have multiple conversations because there's lots of things that a restaurant experiences that we, you know, as non-restaurant owners, don't understand. And so we're learning so much from our partners, things that we should ask for, things that we should modify, and ways that we can help educate the community so that it's easier for them to make those types of changes. Mm -hmm. And did you want to say something? Jennifer? Well, just to add on to that, that, you know, to Emily's point, restaurants really are responsive to their customers. So that's why it's so important for consumers as well. We as residents also have some power to say no to extra plastic coming into our lives that we don't want or need. So, for example, if I'm ordering takeout, if there's a little box for special instructions, I always add a note saying, no plastic utensils, please. Just my way of letting the restaurant know that it's not something I want or need. Mm -hmm. And I think if restaurants hear that message from their customers, they will be responsive to it. You have to listen to your customers. Yeah. <laughs> They're paying you bills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to listen. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I, I have the feeling that there are plenty of people who can relate to our own situation, which is a lot of the time we'll order out from a restaurant and go pick it up. I'll go pick it up usually, and I'll get home and I'll open the bag and I'll go, oh my God, yes. I forgot yes. to tell them that yeah. I don't want all that stuff. Yeah. And again, it would almost be a favor to folks like me, mm -hmm. you know, if more and more restaurants will make that, you know, which if the default will be, I open that bag and it's not there because I didn't say I wanted it. Yeah. Um, that will make, you know, that will work much better for me as a mm -hmm. consumer, as you said. Could be an option on the website. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Yeah. I love it when it is. I love it when there's an option yeah. where I can check. You know, yeah. no utensils needed. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea, Peter. Let me ask you. Um, y you, uh, y you know, Emily described the program having a dine-in component and yes. a dine-out component. My sense would be that it's takeout where you really is. This is going to have the the, the biggest impact. Yes. Is that is that your is, is well, that your for, uh, for us? We were never really just automatically given uh, takeout utensils, plastic utensils with takeout. First off, it's pizza. Usually, you eat it by hand. <laughs> but we also have salads and desserts. But it's just always been if if someone asks or if we know someone uh, is going to the, the car having a lunch outside, you know. We may prompt them, would you like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we never automatically give it to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it really hasn't changed what we're doing at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and the dine-in, uh, you know, a while ago we switched from plastic straws to, to compostable. And same thing with the plastic to-go drink containers to compostable ones. And uh, it's just, we did that years ago because we felt it was what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you guys then um, whether the other restaurants, or in general, as as you have as you kind of see this playing out, mm -hmm. um, is my surmise kind of uh, you know accurate at all that it's really the biggest impact is going to be on the takeout side, or do you do you really see that the dine in there's a lot there's a lot that can be changed there as well? I, I think that's probably correct, right? I think that the takeout. Um, is, is probably where the, there is the biggest opportunity to reduce the amount of waste because, you know, for every person that is eating there in the car, there's m probably, you know, more that are bringing it home and eating where they have a drawer full of silverware. So, um, so we do think that that will be the, the, the biggest change because those are probably the items that are most likely to not be used because they're being 
many of these things are being eaten in the home where those, or like ketchup packets and things like that. I know I have a, a bottle of ketchup in my refrigerator, and so when I forget to tell them I don't want it, and I have this giant you know, handful of ketchup packets, I think, oh shoot, what am I gonna do with all this? I have this giant bottle in my refrigerator. So we are thinking that that will be the uh, predominant um, impact is, is removing that waste. I would say that, that for dining in, straws are the big issue because there are restaurants that still automatically put a straw in a drink, but an increasing number of places yes. like Saw yeah. have moved to make it an option. So if somebody wants it or needs it, they can request it, but it's not automatically in every glass uh, of water or other beverage that's on the table. Yeah, and it's not, again, like condiments and other kinds of things that come in packets that if you're in the restaurant, at least, you can turn around and just yeah. you can give it right back or leave it there. If, that, if, that, if your glass arrives with a straw, yeah, they can't the damage away. is done already, no matter yeah, you know what, what you what you would like yourself. So, um, you guys have, as we've already mentioned, the six restaurants already signed up, mm -hmm. and you've initiated this program, and now we're we're talking about it and hopefully helping you to get the word out that it exists. What are the next steps for this for this program as you see it? Is it simply organically? You were saying a little bit at a time, just expanding out within Arlington. Uh, are you going to concentrate more on takeout heavy places? I mean, I think we do have a list of the restaurants, and we are kind of methodically moving through them. We definitely welcome suggestions. So restaurant owners, um, you know, uh, who feel like they meet these requirements, please reach out, and we will definitely come and visit your restaurant, have a conversation. Um, we provide a little sticker decal for uh, restaurants to put into the window, and then we also have a web page that we maintain that highlights all of these restaurants. So if you have a tip, you know, if you're a restaurant owner or a customer, your favorite restaurant seems like um, they they meet these criteria, we're more than happy to kind of, you know, come a a and talk with those uh, those businesses to make sure that they get the. Um, the, the credit that they deserve as you know as uh, you know like Peter there's probably many other restaurants that are like za yes. and are really have this they're already implementing I like to think so. yeah <laughs> and we just we yeah. just haven't found them all yet because mm -hmm. we are a, a limited number of people who are able to get out there so we welcome tips but you were mentioning if the restaurants meet the requirements or criteria what kinds of restaurants might not or or what what are those criteria that you're that you're referring to that they, that they don't meet. I think it is, um, so for some of the more kind of fast food type of establishments where a person is maybe not gonna sit down, they'll just maybe eat at a counter or something like that, a lot of times that is not being served on a reusable plate mm -hmm. or they are um, providing plastic forks for in-house dining. So I think we are trying to figure out if there is a way that Zero Waste Arlington could help them, you know, maybe perhaps change their, in, you know, their, their supply of spoons and forks for in-house dining, get them to, to change to a reusable um, set. So there are, I, I would say the faster food establishments would be the ones that are relying more on that um, dis single use disposable things. And I think that's where the partnership comes in, where we, we really need to talk to them and, and find out, is there something, a way that we can help you change um, the in-house dining experience? Yeah, I, I, so I can tell that basically um, this is an initiative that can, you know, that, that you could put into practice pretty quickly mm -hmm. with some partners. Um, but basically it falls within a larger context in which you're interested as Zero Waste Arlington in just collaborating yes. with restaurants about how to make maybe the improvement, maybe the changes that a restaurant could make wouldn't be exactly the same as what No Plastics Please is, is yes. about. But if they're receptive to working with you guys about how to make their practices better than they are currently, mm -hmm. Um, in, in these terms, then you'd be more than... Of course. We're learning a lot. We're learning from them. We're learning the, the, the struggles and the challenges that they face, and we're definitely interested in trying to figure out a way to reduce the plastic. Mm -hmm. And we're always trying to find better ways to do it. So, you know, it's, it's a two-way street. It's and would you support say, each other. Yeah, would you say, Peter, that, you know, again, I'm not asking you to be a proxy for all restaurant owners or anything like that, but would you say in general that there is a receptivity on the part of owners that you, other owners that you know uh, to this kind of thing or? I don't know. I, I think that, that a lot of times it's uh, 
initially it's like, okay, we're doing this because we want to do it. It's mm -hmm. not, not because other people think we should be doing it or, or what other restaurants are doing. It's kind of like, it's the right thing to do, so, so let's do it this way. And I, you know, I, for a while, uh, it seemed like not a, not a lot of places were receptive to, to making those changes. And the more the more receptive restaurants that are to doing it, the the lower the cost will be, the low, less plastic will be produced, the more combustible, which uh, hopefully is a good thing, will be used in its place. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just, you know, continue to try and learn and try and make it the, the best we can. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, we're, we're running out of time. I promised you guys it was going to go fast, and it has, <laughs> right? Um, but let me just ask you, you know, this is one initiative that, that, that is current and that, you know, we will be tracking as, as you guys continue to, to um, roll it out. Um, but what else is, can we expect? Yeah, um, thank you for asking. Um, so the other initiative that we wanted to mention that we're excited about is Arlington on Tap. So again, Arlington recently passed a ban on single-use plastic water bottles. So as part of that, we're really encouraging people to use refillable, reusable water bottles. And we want to expand access to Arlington's tap water, which is very high quality. So we're having a series of conversations with town stakeholders, town officials, to try to expand the network of water refilling stations in outdoor locations, especially in places like along the bike path and at playing fields. Um, and some great news is that the newest one was just established at Heard Field. Sure. So people can take That's advantage true. of that, which is terrific. And we hope that in the near future there will be some additional locations. And the other thing I should mention, um, since we're talking about restaurants, Almost all restaurants in Arlington will give you a free glass of tap water with your meal, but there are some venues that actually offer water dispensers where you can fill your water glass, you can fill your water bottle. So three that I know of are Kickstand Cafe, Roasted Granola, and the Capitol Theater. If you've been to the Capitol Theater in the concession area where you get your napkins or your condiments, there's a jug of water mm -hmm. there where you can mm -hmm. you know, fill a glass of water. So we hope that other restaurants will um, follow that practice and just like we have the no plastics please window decal stickers we also have Arlington on tap window decal stickers for those places and we have a map on our website where these water refill stations are located both indoor and out and hopefully that network will continue to grow. As somebody whose water bottle is never far from my side for <laughs> many 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 years now mm -hmm. Uh, I love that. Yeah. I love the idea that I can, you know, have more places to refill it. Yeah. So that's that's fantastic. Especially so many fields in town, so well used are oh, those gosh. fields. The fact that Herd Field is now a place that you can do that, let's hope that, that that's a harbinger of things to come. Yeah, so. definitely. All right. Well, I want to thank all three of you for sure uh, for coming thank in for the conversation. Yeah. We yeah. really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. In fact, let's just finish. I know we're a little bit over time, but let's just finish by repeating the six restaurants who are signed up yes. so far to No Plastics, Please. And the idea there is that maybe, you know, people who are frequent those places can just let them know that they appreciate that, perhaps. But even more so, think about the places that aren't on the yeah. list and where you as a consumer can kind of go in, as Peter was saying, consumer is king, you know, mm -hmm. there's in other places. And maybe you can go in and have a chat as well, uh, you know, with, with your local favorite restaurant. So, the six are. Yeah, Rosa Granola, Heights Pub, uh, Sashwan Dumpling, Punjab, Noodle Market, and Za. Excellent. All right, so I have been speaking from Zero Waste Arlington Committee with Emily Dirtz and Jennifer Campbell, and Peter McCarthy is the co-owner right. of <laughs> Za Restaurant. Um, as I said, we do appreciate their time very much. We hope that it has been a valuable half hour for you. It has for me, that's for sure. Uh, this has been Talk of the Town. I am James Milan. We'll see you next time.